What's going on guys? Thanks for watching. Uh, today we're going to be editing one of my favorite pictures. I get messages all the time asking if I can make a video on how to edit it. So we are going to do that today. A few things. If you guys are new to the channel, I'm not going to tell you to subscribe, but subscribe. Um, yeah, that'd be super cool. Uh, I'm just starting out, so it'd be really nice if you guys, if you could help me out a little bit. I'll be explaining my step-by-step -step process on how to edit. Obviously, everyone has a different opinion, so people can edit this picture in many other ways. This is the way I like to do it. So if you guys enjoy, please hit the thumbs up and uh, let's get into it. Run it. All right, so to start off, let's drag our Lightroom in. Normally I would use presets. Um, presets just kind of help get the photo started. In this photo, I didn't use a preset and I'll show you why. A few things before we start, always crop the photo before you get into your editing. It just makes life easier. In my case, I'm actually not gonna crop it. I like the way it's sitting. This photo was taken on a pretty dark night. So everything's not 100% in focus, unfortunately, but I'm sure we can make it work. All right, first things first, I like making my uh, temperatures pretty cool, um, especially for a photo like this. I don't know why I like doing it, but I do. We're gonna bring it right down to about, yeah. Yeah, we'll say 2950 is good. Obviously the picture doesn't look like this at the end, but I'll show you why we're doing this after. It's bringing out a lot of the warm tones and then once the warm tones are gone, you can desaturate it. I'll show you what I mean. This we can bring down some more greens. I know it's gonna look very green. It's not what we're going for, but just bear with me and I'll show you why. Yeah, that's not bad. Uh, exposure's pretty good. I always like trying my best to get a perfect exposure out of camera. Um, obviously it was a really dark night and it's not that easy to do. So we're gonna bump it up a little bit. Bring it up to about 0.72, yeah. 0.70 should be good. All right. Now I like contrast. Uh, contrast is nice. It brings out a lot of the details. Uh, let's bring this up to about 54 is all right. I know the picture looks weird. Bear with me, you'll see why I'm doing all this eventually. Now, something really big I like to do, um, highlights. Get rid of them, zero. As you can tell, if you bring down your highlights, um, basically it's just dulling out the image more and you're actually able to see more colors. Everything's kind of white, right? Until you take out your highlights, um, it starts to actually bring out more color, dull down the image a little bit and stuff seems to pop more. Um, so highlights is a big one. Now another thing I like doing, especially for a photo like this, I like bringing my shadows all the way up it's gonna look grainy, there's gonna be a lot of noise, but we can go in later on and uh, do some noise reduction, stuff like that. I don't know if you guys can really tell on there, but the sky is super noisy up here. Lots of grain, stuff like that, but we can fix that later on. All right, so next thing, uh, your whites and blacks. I don't like messing with these too much. It really makes, <laughs> as you can tell. Um, this I'll probably bring up to about 23, 24. Yeah, so that's about right there. Um, this one, your blacks, I don't like bringing up too much either because it brings up more noise. So I'll bring that up to about 13, 14. Now with clarity, a lot of people actually just like putting it to 100, makes this photo look way sharper, stuff like that. It's not the case. It actually makes your photos look almost amateur-like. You want to stay away from using that much clarity. Like I said, this is my opinion. You guys can do what you guys want to do. However you like your photos is how you like your photos as long as you're happy. But in my personal opinion, clarity, if anything, in portraits and stuff like that, usually I'll bring the clarity down. It'll soften out the photo a bit more. It'll make it look a bit more smooth and dreamy-like. But in this case, I am going to bring it up a little bit. I might bring it up to about 10 to 15. Not too much. A lot of fine detailing in these pictures. Like when I edit, I'm looking at everything. Now, vibrance and saturation, um, these are huge. These can make your photo go from zero to 100. Obviously, if I bring down the vibrance, you'll have a few colors staying in there, but not many. What I like to personally do is up the vibrance and lower the saturation. 
So I'll bring the vibrant up to about 40, maybe a bit more. No, 40 seems about right. And then with my saturation, I'll kind of desaturate it just a bit so the colors still pop, but not too much. Let's go to the 15. Yeah, that's about right. So tone curve, um, I like adding my tone curve at the end. There's a lot of wacky things you can do with the tone curve. I can make a whole other video about how to use a tone curve properly, but do your research. It could change your photos forever, um, but we'll get back to that in a bit. Hue, saturation, and luminance. These three are the most important about this photo. For hues, I'm gonna bring it more pinkish, not much. I might bring it to about six. Minus six, sorry. For oranges, um, I love my oranges. As you guys can tell on my feed, I like using different oranges and different reds and stuff like that to make my feed pop while I desaturate every other color. In this photo, that will be the case. So I'm gonna bump my oranges towards more yellow. Bring it to about 26 and that should be fine. Yellow, green, and aqua, I'm gonna bring these right down to orange. So my yellows are gonna be completely orange. Greens will make more yellowish and aqua will make a bit more green. So as you can tell, the photo is starting to pop a bit more. Those greens and those cool tones are starting to go away. My blues, purples, and magentas, I'm gonna leave them at that. I'm not too worried about those right now. Now for red, I'm gonna bring the saturation right up. Bring it up to about 34, 35. Yeah, that's about right. Now my oranges and yellows, like I said, I love my oranges and yellows. I'm gonna bring my orange up to maybe about 60. Let's see. Yeah, I'll put it to about almost 70. 69 should be okay. Uh, my yellows, I will also bring up. I'll bring that up, not as much as the oranges, but I'll bring that up to about 59. That should be all right. Now, as you guys can tell in the photo, we still have those green tones, as you can see around here and here. With the saturation, what I'll do now is I will completely get rid of all those green tones. Gone, right? So there's still gonna be a bit here. Aqua, blue, purple, and magenta. I will get rid of them, but not completely. I'll bring them down to about 86, 86. Now you're really gonna see the photo start to pop. All right, so much different than how we started. Um, like I said, all those blue and green tones are actually gone now, which is super nice. So now as you can tell, I have basically the whole photo is desaturated except for a lot of orange and yellows and reds and stuff like that. Um, personally, I hate purples, magentas and blues in my photos. That's just how I am. For luminance, I'm actually gonna bring up the red about 28, no, let's say about 30, just highlights. For oranges, I'm also gonna bring up the luminance um, so the oranges aren't as harsh. So if you look right in here and I bring up the oranges, it almost whitens them out a little bit. Um, if I go down, they start to look fake and too orange. So I am gonna bring them up, bring them up to about, yeah, 40 should be okay. All right, so for my yellows, same thing. I will bring them up just to kind of soften out the photo a bit more so the yellows aren't too harsh. Same with the oranges. My greens, I should bring them up. Even though there's no greens in the photo, what was green will still illuminate. As you can tell in the photo, when I bring up and down the green, stuff will still change. Um, it's basically changing the luminance of what was green. So since there's no more greens, it's basically just gonna make it brighter or darker, kind of like your highlights. Um, so for greens, I don't like bringing them up too much. I'm gonna bring them to about 20. 20 should be fine. Aqua, those can stay at zero. There wasn't much aqua in the photo to begin with. Um, blues, there was blue, not much, as you can tell. Um, I will knock those down a bit. Maybe bring them down to maybe negative 15. All right, so another super important thing, um, especially in my photos, highlights and shadows. Split toning is huge. It's another thing you have to learn. Um, it's not easy to accomplish, but anything can be done. So highlights, I like bringing them to about 22. Obviously you can tell it makes a photo more red when I crank the saturation up, but we're not gonna keep it like that. I'm just gonna put a slight, slight saturation on there. So it's at about eight. 
Yeah, it doesn't add much, it, but it will. The more you add this stuff together, the more the photo will come to life. So don't worry about that. Shadows, I also have a magic number. I like 217 to about 222. It's just It just gives off a vibe that I really like. Obviously, you can crank up the saturation and play with it as much as you want. So there, it gives it more of a blue feel, right? Um, I love that kind of dark, moody blue, um, but not too much of it. So I might only put three or four. No, I lied. Uh, we'll put about 10 in there. Yeah, that's not bad. Now with sharpening, typically I'll put sharpening up to about 40. I think it actually comes that way anyways. Radius 1.0, detail 25, masking zero. I mean, this is all preference. Obviously the more sharpening you do, the more noise will be introduced into your photos. So be careful when sharpening, but it could really help you out. Uh, noise reduction, I definitely use noise reduction, especially on this photo. Not too much. I'll bring it up to maybe about 32. No, we'll go down a bit more. Let's go to about 26. It's about right. Obviously the photo is still gonna be noisy. It was at nighttime, my ISO was cranked right up. So it's not gonna be perfect, but it is what it is. Noise reduction. Detail, I'll put to about 25, 26 as well. Um, I always check these off. It just helps out. Um, it always adds the positive vignette, and I don't know why, so I just turn that back down. Distortion, I like using a bit of distortion. It kind of distorts the photo slightly, if you can tell. Um, nothing crazy, but it definitely does add some effect. Transform, you don't really need to worry about. All right, so one of the last things that I like to do in these photos, um, vignetting. When you're using vignetting, don't use too much of it, or else you can really tell. I just like kind of having a little bit in there for effect. I might bring this up to about 20, 25, 25 is a bit much. 15, 20 is not bad. We'll meet in the middle and go 17. Oh, negative 17. All right, now that's pretty much it for the rest. Uh, calibration, these change a lot of things in your photos. Um, that's a whole nother topic I can get into. I don't really use them too much, but remember, tone curve. Now with tone curve, what I like doing is I'll make three points, one there, one in the middle, and one down there. You just grab this bottom part here, with, which is your shadows. Now you can really bump up the shadows and add a lot of effect in the photo, as you guys can tell. It makes it almost dreamy-like, but I personally don't like cranking it up too much. I might put another point in here and just slightly bring it up. All right, now my highlights you can also bring down that'll also add effect not too much just very slightly all right guys well that is pretty much it here's before here is after if you guys have any questions about how i did this edit or you want me to go into detail about more stuff drop it in the comments i'll definitely respond to you and help you guys out if there's any more photos on my feed that you guys want to see me edit please drop it in the comments we'll definitely edit them together if you guys want me to edit any of your photos, message me on Instagram. We can definitely do that. Be sure to follow, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.